Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about the subject of ECC memory or error correcting code or error code correction memory depending on how you want to deal with that an acronym. I know everyone's got different ones. It's like RAID all over again. And today I want to talk about what exactly ECC is in the most caveman terms possible and talk about the advantages and disadvantages because the number of brands, I would say Synology more than most, have been embracing ECC memory on their mid-range units, their SMB, small medium business, and until recently, ECC was always considered the tippity top enterprise level um, kind of embracing of ECC, uh, of that kind of memory with all of its advantages with regards to the checks as data passes through the memory. And now more and more, we're seeing brands embracing it in the mid level. You're probably never going to see it at the home level. ECC has almost no advantages to the average home user, but for those guys at SMB, we're seeing lots of people using databases in their business that you know, even small bit level errors can generate and gradually over time get worse and worse. I should also highlight that there is building work taking place just behind me. And as much as I'm trying to get rid of that in the background there, there's a slight hum there that is very, very difficult to get rid of. So I apologize if that's getting picked up there on the mic right there. But let's talk about ECC memory. What exactly is it? Well, when we look at a lot of these modern solutions, we see them all using DDR4. DDR4 um, is a class of memory in terms of its speed and power usage and stuff like that. And generally, ECC is now largely available at the DDR4 level. Here are two units that use DDR4 memory, one with ECC and one without. This is the DS1621+. Plus. It arrives with 4 gig of ECC DDR4 memory. And this is the 920. This arrives with 4 gig of non-ECC DDR4. DDR4 memory. Now I've removed um, memory from the 1621. The memory is soldered on the 920, but I have got a 4 gig module. And the first thing that will strike you about comparing this memory, so if we lift up firstly the memory on the 920 series, this is the upgraded memory, um, if you go for it. Now I'm going to peel the label, which will invalidate your warranty, so don't do this at home. Underneath that Synology label, you'll see four chips there on the board. Okay, now this is a one-sided stick, but as you see there, there are four chips. There's two just behind that red sticker there, and two just underneath that white sticker. Now if we move to the ECC memory, we can see where the magic happens. Because if we peel that label back, we can see there, underneath the official label, we have got five chips. We've got the two there, and three there. And that extra chip is what it's all about. It's about having an extra layer of protection on the way the data is being handled. Now, with error code correction memory, it's about avoiding errors at the bit level. So, as data passes through the system, when it's being accessed and then written to your storage, chances are that there are some factors, such as um, static interference, um, just general radiation that exists in everything around us, but particularly in these close-knit environments, and when pressure builds up, that can cause some of the electronic impulses on a simple binary of zeros and ones to change. So all the data we deal with can be broken down to zeros and ones. And these uh, background, this background radiation, electronic impulses, anything around, or even hard um, error causing elements such as surrounding temperature or physical damage to memory modules can affect the way data is handled as it passes through the memory. So data will arrive on the memory, be passed through and then handed over to the main storage system. And again, this is caveman, I get that. But error code correction creates a kind of a blueprint, a parity, um, a code block of uh, the data that's passing through it at the beginning, uh, that when the data is read from, and then at the end, it compares that against the parity it's created. Now, again, that's not really how ECC memory works, but without going into um, hammer, hamming codes and the Reed Solomon code and talking about the multiplication factor and the seven bit uh, background encryption code that gets created, that is basically it. That data, when read, uh, code is created, and then as it is written at the end, it compares the code first, and if they aren't identical, it then repairs the outgoing code to that of the original, and therefore it maintains and heals any potential bit problems as data passes through the memory. That is ultimately it, but it's very, very important. 
not so much to the day-to-day -day, uh, users of you know home PCs, mobile phones, even low-level multimedia NAS users are never going to know that difference because the errors are so, so small that you need a large collection of those errors happening simultaneously to have any kind of real impact. And at that level, generally errors of that scale will be noticed early doors, be it because of the degradation of the memory itself or some of those background error factors that we talked about earlier on that cause hard and soft errors in the background. But once we get to the higher tiers, when we talk about um, big old databases, when we talk about medical or business uh, practicalities where the amount of data is huge but incredibly uh, complex and has to be handled very, very fast, that is when these errors cannot be tolerated and ultimately that is when ECC comes into its own. So we talked about what ECC is, we talked about who use it, who use it, uses it. Now let's talk about you, should you use it. Let's talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of ECC memory. Now it is pretty clear cut but the advantages are twofold. One, they're just the general data integrity. It's that seal and that extra peace of mind that comes from knowing that there's another component in your server system that is running checks on the data. If you've got UPSs in your storage environment, if you use a one or two disk RAID situation that has a configuration that will, a safety net of one or two drives with that parity running in the background, if you run um, a, a high availability environment where you're cloning servers together or you've got a multi-tier backup solution, then the idea of the very memory in your system um, running these checks to avoid errors um, is going to be incredibly appealing. And again, if you work within financial institutions, this is incredibly important. If you run within medical uh, um, uh, organizations which have large amounts of medical data that cannot afford to have even the tiniest error that can affect someone's life, that's important too. If you're running enormous SQL databases made up of millions of lines of code, then ECC memory is incredibly advantageous to you. And that's one of its biggest advantages, the simple act of data integrity. Another big advantage is just generally the lack of intervention that you need to have. Some of the biggest and most important innovations that have happened, not just in the world of data storage, but in IT in general, have reached their zenith, have reached their moment of popularity and utilization when they no longer require human intervention. RAID and backups are mostly automated. They are mostly automated. You still have to set them up and you will have to maintain them and monitor them, but for the most part, they are automated with maybe 10, maybe 5% of intervention required by a human being. ECC memory requires zero intervention, with the exception of the memory breaking a physically breaking, which is something that any system, ECC or not, is going to notify the user, ECC memory requires zero intervention from the end user. The result being it is quite, you know, valuable to a lot of businesses that can't afford for someone to be rudimentary, um, rudimentarily checking code periodically over time. And it's one of the main reasons that ECC went from coming out of nowhere to being everywhere at the enterprise grade level. It's been around for long enough with the technology behind it dating back as early as the 70s and the 60s. But the fact still remains that businesses embrace it because of that lack of intervention being needed and the whole thing being completely um, self-purposed. But it's not all good. It has to be said, first and foremost, not everyone can use ECC memory. Now, the reason I highlight these two systems is that they were released about five months apart, maybe slightly less, and with these two systems, they both arrived with support of DDR4 memory, both of them arriving with support of SODIM um, DDR4 memory, but it's worth highlighting that although they are identical in terms of connection and the ports and pins, the 920 will not recognize ECC memory. It will see the memory and it will probably use the memory, but you won't be able to use the ECC uh, element. And that is because you need to make sure you have a CPU that can take advantage of it. Generally, um, server grade CPUs like Xeons, but there are ones lesser than that. That new um, Ryzen uh, based SOC one, the V1500B, does recognize ECC, but you also have to make sure the MOBO, the motherboard, the controller board, also recognizes it as well. So it's one of the limitations that although the memory has got all of the good work being done on board, you've got to make sure that the NAS CPU and hardware can support it and that can be annoying that you want to use it but you just simply can't. Next, 
And this is uh, something that has definitely minimized over time. Uh, ECC memory is generally slower in a like-for-like -like comparison of people have reported between 1 and 3% slower in operations. The reason being that background checks happening there in the back with the error code um, uh, being compared against it and the creation of uh, the parity there in the background with that 7-bit code uh, with the one extra on the end. The result is that a number of users, less so these days, might be slightly put off by that performance dip, but by, I mean, we are genuinely talking one to 3% here. So it is incredibly minimal now, but I do mention it because some of you might actually care, but it is worth highlighting that we do often see ECC memory, like for like, arriving at lower frequencies. So for example, once again, in the case of these two devices, they both got DDR4 memory on sodium, one's got ECC, one doesn't, but this runs at 2,666 megahertz, this at 2,400. And more and more ECC memory you see, in like-for-like -like comparisons, you see a slight dip in the frequency inside on these devices because of the um, parity and error code checking there in the background. Uh, and lastly, prices. ECC memory generally is around 10 to 20% more expensive. Now, that is not a huge surprise, given the extra amount of work, you've got to make sure that there's a space on board to have the extra ECC ch chip, the little um, controller there. But a number of you, unless you're going to take advantage of that, once you break into the 8, the 16, the 32 gig sticks, ECC can get quite expensive overall. And you want to know that you're going to utilize the extra performance as well, because uh, you know, high-level hyperscale environments, they use hundreds of gigabytes of memory. Once you reach that scale at ECC, the prices really do rack into the hundreds, if not thousands, there overall, because then you need tremendous heat sinks for these, and the installation of them becomes incredibly top-end. So it's worth highlighting that ECC memory, if you're going to go down that road, is going to cost you a little bit more. And you do notice, uh, particularly with server brands, and I'm not just talking about Synology here, I'm talking about pretty much anyone that produces their own contained server solutions, their own brand memory is generally more expensive than the off-the-shelf Kingston, Samsung, etc., etc., and Crucial and more. So you end up with a situation where you've got Crucial, Kingston, and Samsung here, then you've got the NAS's own brand memory, and then you've got the ECC variant. So the scaling of pricing will go up. So that's definitely a concern for you, you guys looking at ECC memory there. But... Always bear in mind that a number of solutions do support both. Do check out the CPU compatibility and certainly the compatibility pages from NAS brands like Synology, QNAP, QSAN and more. These ones that produce a lot of heavier rack mount solutions where they will actually support both. Don't mix because you really will not see any benefit of ECC if you mix and you shouldn't really mix and match memory anyway. But this has been what is ECC memory? Do you need it? What are the pros and cons? And hopefully this has helped you along the way. Click like if it has and subscribe to learn more. Visit the link in the description to NAS Compares and otherwise I will see you next time.